a land where sunshine abounds in plenty, where India and Bharat walk hand in hand, where on one side lights dazzle and on the other darkness rules. Only the sun can be the bridge that truly empowers India, that can save India from an impending energy doom. Fast, pacey, always on the move. Life never stops in a metro, where the day starts with the setting of the sun and the night lights set the tune. But in this little hamlet of Uttar Pradesh, barely a few hours away from India's pulsating capital city, shadows dance with light. Where, with the setting of the sun, life comes to a stop. In this little hut in this village, one candle flame is all that 11-year-old Raju has to light up his world. I study in the school and my sister is going to school. I study in the school. T-T-S-C-H-A-R I study in my house, my mom and father are my sister. I have to be a doctor, but I have to go to Bijli Gaon. मोमबत्ती से पढ़ता हूँ तो आँखों में जलन होना होने लगता है और आँख टपकने लगता है। The neighboring villages are lucky; they have recently been given access to power. And as Raju battles the darkness, he wonders when his turn will come. मैं पढ़ाई नहीं कर पाता और पेपर देना भी है जब हम तो किसान आदमी हैं किसी तरह से खेती बारी करके जो है अपना पेट पाल रहे हैं बच्चों का पाल पाल रहे हैं और उसको पढ़ाई करवा रहे हैं। There are millions like Raju that live in India's remotest villages, facing a black, powerless future. ना ही बिजली भी आता कहाँ पढ़ें, मट्टी तेल जलाई पढ़ें, महंगा हो गया था तेल तो कहाँ से मिले? बिजली नहीं है, खाना कैसे बनाए? तो लाइट अगर रहती है तो समर सेवल वगैरह से भी काम हो जाता है, पर समय समय से अगर पानी मिल जाए तो खेती अच्छी हो जाती है, और तमाम पेयजल की समस्या जो है, उससे भी आराम हो सकता है। India is an energy hungry nation, but electricity has remained a distant dream for millions of Indians. The resources that we have around are all limited resources, you know, and our day to day Demand is increasing every day. According to the census 2011, more than 32% of households in India lack basic access to electricity. As you know, India has a power crisis. Challenge can be, to some extent, it can be taken by the sun. We can take a lot of energy from sun and convert into electrical power. It's a new dawn, and as Raju awakes with the first rays of the sun, seems to be an omen. The sun is all set to brighten Raju's life. It's going to be a busy day. Trucks laden with men and equipment are rolling down these dusty lanes. This is the team from Sukam, a company that invests in alternate sources of energy. Sukam has been doing, uh, you know, uh, solar business for quite some time, and we have been continuously improving our products. We are investing in technologies, we are investing in people, so we are trying to bring solutions which is cost effective. It's the power of imagination at work for lighting up the lives of these villagers and countless children like Raju. Today, we have come to Ilahabad, Patevra, where we have got a lot of people in 151 houses in solar packages. हम लोग सुकैम पावर सिस्टम्स लिमिटेड गुड़गांव से आए हुए हैं। आपके गांव में जो लोहिया आवास बने हुए हैं, उनमें से और ऊर्जा से बिजली उत्पन्न करने के जो उपकरण हैं, वो हम आपके घरों में लगाएंगे। सौर ऊर्जा अगर लग जाएगा, तो भाई सारे मोहल्ले में, सारे गांव में लाइट का प्रकाश रहेगा हर समय। 
a shared understanding of the need for development, has brought Sukam and the Uttar Pradesh government together. UPNEDA project is uh, about providing electricity to the poorest of the poor, where you know the even the electricity grid is not reaching them. We have uh, supplied around 40,000 houses in UP where people haven't seen electricity. They don't have lights, they don't have fans. Appropriately enough, the installation process will begin from Raju's house. This is where darkness will, quite literally, begin to give way to light. This is a first of its kind, ambitious, large-scale DC project aiming to reach 40,000 households across 19 districts in rural Uttar Pradesh. In this solar power pack, we will put a panel of 120 watts on their chest. This is a charge controller that will be put in their cameras. It's getting to dusk, with the sun finally leaving its shadow. But tonight is when the shadows disappear forever for Raju. मैं जो है यहाँ से करीब 100 किलोमीटर जाता था मोबाइल चार्ज करने के लिए सर लेकिन अब तो हमको इतना सुविधा मिल गई कि हम अपने घर में खुद जो है बैठे-बैठे चार्ज कर लेंगे। For a village that has long awaited its place in the sun, this change is nothing short of overwhelming. This is the hub of innovation in the heart of Gurgaon where Sukam's engineers spend sleepless nights dreaming of a new dawn for Raju and his friends. Raju's village won't just get solar panels installed. Each household here will also get solar battery units, which have the capacity to store enough energy for three days in case of cloudy weather. Solar is a variable thing. The power you get from the solar is not a standard power. Sometimes you get 5 watts, sometimes you get 10 watts, sometimes you get 100 watt. So you have to have an auxiliary uh, source with this and that is called battery. One and two, how are you? We got light, 24 hours of light in the night. We got 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 light. With this system, they are now able to have light so that their children can read after the evening, after their school. They have a fan so that they can run in the daytime or the evening time so that they can enjoy the power of a town or a midtown where people have lights and fans. होता था काम हम पचे अन्य की गर्मी में नहीं कर सकते थे जब से सोलर लग गया है तब से गर्मी नहीं लगती आराम से हम लोग रहते हैं पंखा उनका चला लेते हैं लाइट वाइट सब सुविधा हो गया है We have seen people who have the smiles in the people's face when the light glows in their house the first time and if and the fan runs it's a very big thing in, in, in you know, being, putting our SUCAM's foot forward in helping societies around India. Where technology and social consciousness meet, change is inevitable and smooth. And as solar power spreads across India, the sky's the limit for its potential to power the nation. The dream is to go bigger, aim higher, and spread the sunshine. Rajendranagar, North Tripura, a remote part of India, far removed from glossy urban existence. But the same sun that shines over India's tiniest metros 
smiles over this little settlement too and holds the power to change lives. I am the medical officer at uh, Bajananagar PHC, which is uh, about uh, 20 kilometers far from Dharmanagar. Uh, there are six villages dependent on Bajananagar, uh, and uh, the population is around 26,000 people. And they are all dependent on this PHC for the healthcare. Every day, the Brajendranagar Primary Health Center is visited by about 60 to 70 patients, most of them expectant mothers. And like most days, there's an urgent case at the PHC today too. One delivery patient has come. Patient name is Lippi Begum and she is having pain abdomen. That is called labor pain. We are uh, checked the, all the parameters. That is all the fine plus pulse rate, blood pressure, and all the bias physical profiles all are within the normal limits. We are trying for trying to go for the normal vaginal delivery, not to the cesarean section. And we are, our all the staffs are well prepared for getting the baby out as nice as possible. This remote hospital is a world away from the state-of-the-art healthcare facilities that exist in major Indian cities but the staff is just as attuned to its patients' needs, though the circumstances are trying. Bangladesh is about 200 meters from here. After 7 o'clock, you can't go from here. The other people are 200 kilometers from here. I can't say that 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 I can't say that. In Tripura, you know, due to some geographical disadvantages, it is not techno-economically feasible to extend the grid line there. In hospitals, we have to have light as a basic source. Without light, we can't think of uh, life there. So we was uh, doing a few deliveries even with the candlelight at night. And uh, even the suction machine, and other machine which, which we use during the delivery was not working due to the lack of electricity. Now the scenery has changed because of uh, the solar power given, given by the SUCAM. It is the only one system in the country where all the health establishments have been covered under these solar power plants. Than 90 hospitals all over Tripura have now been equipped with solar panels, ensuring round the clock power for patients. It's fortunate for Lippi Begum that she's been brought to the Brajendranagar PHC by a healthcare representative known as Asha. <laughs> Lippi Begum will now be able to deliver her baby in a well-equipped medical facility without the fear of a power failure. But that hasn't necessarily been the case for expectant mothers before her. I was <laughs> going to deliver a baby, so I was going to go to the hospital. I was going to go to the hospital, so I was going to go to the hospital. I was going to go to the hospital, so I was going to go to the hospital. I was going to go to the hospital, so I was going to go to the hospital. I was going to go to the hospital, so I was going to go to the hospital. I was going to go to the hospital, so I was going to go to the hospital. I was going to go to the hospital, so I was going to go to the hospital. या कैंडलर मुद्दे ही सारे यो करते हैं डेलीवरी हुई से वी हैव डेलीवर्ड ए वेरी हेल्दी बेबी एवरीथिंग इज ऑलरेड एंड सिचुएशन इज अंडर कंट्रोल इफ यू गिव द बेबी इन द नॉर्मल वेदर और अंडर द रूम टेम्परेचर बेबी माइट हैव हाइपोथर्मिक अटैक टू प्रिवेंट दिस we keep the baby under the radiant warmer. And now early days, we didn't have any uh, 
regular electricity supply. Nowadays, we are running the radiant warmer also by solar energy very nicely and conveniently. We have sent the mother to the world and we'll uh, make the postnatal checkup subsequently and uh, we'll advise the mother to the breastfeed the baby after half an hour. With the advent of solar power, PHCs as a whole in Tripura are better prepared and properly equipped for any medical emergency. All of our lights are running on solar, solar power panel. Then we have nebulizers, machines running on the solar power panel. Then we, have, we can charge the, our ECG machine that we have. Then we have ice line refrigerators and deep freezers which are useful in storage of vaccines. Then this is occurring mainly because of the solar power panel. We can keep our vaccines preserved. Even uh, at our office, where we send the reports, the data which are sent uh, through computers, after getting the solar power, there's a continuous supply of power and it has relieved us a lot. The areas that we install these inverters are mountainous region. So in those remote locations, there will be no, no proper roads. Even to have a, a small piece of screwdriver or a thimble wire, you need to go back a long distance to get those tools and come back. So we also had supplied remote monitoring kit with them so that remotely people can monitor what exactly the load is, what is the status of their battery. They can remotely monitor them, they can control the parameters and do the settings out of uh, a remote location. Solar power has ensured that Lippy Begum's baby is born without a hitch. Now that the delivery is done, it's time for Dr. Goswami to check on both the mother and the child. The reflex is very good. Baby's condition is very good. Now I have checked the, all the uh, there is physical examinations. Now I am going to discharge the baby with some uh, basic uh, advice to the mother and to the Asha. Uh, <laughs> And if more hospitals across the country bring in solar power, millions of mothers like Lippi Begum will beam as brightly as the sun. Electric energy, powerful, versatile, abundant. But though we've all gotten used to flicking a switch and commanding electricity to do our bidding, few of us stop to think about the future. Will electric power always be available as easily and abundantly as it seems to be these days? In India, we have a lot of roof space available. So if we convert that roof space into solar and we start uh, exporting our uh, solar energy to the grid, it will be a great help for, for the country and for us also. This is the Punjab Engineering College in Chandigarh, the perfect microcosm of urban India. Where ideas meet dreams. It also runs up a bill of one lakh rupees on just its electricity demands. Assume that the battery lives follow a normal distribution. But there are winds of change blowing. Well, innovation is existence. If we want to exist, if we want to change, if we want to grow and develop, then innovation is an essential ingredient of life. Tech, as an institute, has taken an initiative to provide its rooftops to install solar panels for the generation of power through solar energy. A simple idea with a path-breaking thought. Utilizing the sun's energy, this college is now generating their own electricity through the one megawatt solar power rooftop installation. 
when it was allotted, it was the largest solar rooftop installation in India, not across education institutions, across India as a whole. Not just that, when the demand is low during holidays, the surplus power produced is given back to the grid. And that is the revolutionary concept of net metering. In the net metering, what you do is basically you install the solar power plant and the output of the solar power plant is fed to the distribution box of your house or the office, wherever it is, before the DISCOM energy meter. So the basic idea is that first you should consume the solar electricity that you are producing and the access, if any, will go to the grid. And your billings will be done on the import minus export basis, that is net metering. The incentive here is that the consumer gets credit for the surplus electricity fed back in the grid. The energy you are making in your house, you are not using it, and you are sending it back to the electricity board. So for that, the government pays you per unit price. It's a win-win situation for everyone. Energy saved, revenue generated. All through the wonders of solar technology. Technology plays a very important and crucial role in the way we live life. So innovation is going to be there. We do it every day. Without it, uh, it will all be stagnant and change is the only thing that is constant. The way we are, uh, the government is taking the step, I'm very sure that we will be going with the leading solar country of the world. And innovation in the field of solar power will certainly help take India forward. In a world that's consumed by pollution and where energy reserves are fast depleting, solar makes sense. So future of the solar energy lies in replacing all the fossil fuels available in this world right now. I'll not be surprised if everything is running on the solar because this is one energy which is available all the time. It will remain with the generations. The possibilities are endless and the boundaries are limitless. For while the sun lives, we live. And that ever-shining light in the sky can become the fuel that powers India. <laughs>